new stuff at Target, new stuff in the mail, collectibles coming from all over the place. So much good stuff. Josh, hit it. What's up? Here we are, all Chronicles in the house. We look different. We're so next to each other. It's weird. That's weird. A, the magic of, of green screen right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Andy's what? actually in Alabama. No, he's not. <sighs> weird. No, he's not. Welcome to episode 74 of the Hollow Chronicles podcast. I'm Andy. I'm Josh. We have a ton of stuff to get to, like literal tonnage of toys and collectibles, Star Wars related. Josh, there's, there's some... Um, well, first of all, did you get anything this week? Let's just roll right into this. I did, but we're going to save that for later. Okay. Well, so did I, and we can save that for now. Okay. Let's okay. save it. And I haven't even really now. taken it out of the box yet. But no, this... hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. You're going a little, you're going a little crazy here. Okay. But we, we do have to talk about the elephant in the room. That's not me. Is it me? It's not you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's our, we got a, we're, we're trying a new thing tonight. Yeah, we are. We're doing a little side by side action, little head on. Little Andy and Josh, no talking heads, just you guys, one camera. Table, <laughs> table. Uh, you know, here we are. Uh, we've got some toys behind us, like we, like Andy usually does. I've moved away from my normal spot. We're trying it out. We're trying it out. I'm giving this it. Is, this giving is, it a go, as they say. This is what say. collectors do, right? We finally come together. Yeah. We're trying some stuff out. So if there's any technical difficulties, deal with it. Yeah. Because we don't know if this is all going to work. But we're working on it. So uh, we, we told you we are going to make a change last week, and, and, we're, and we're, we're beginning that right now. Yeah, the, the ball is turning a little bit. What's going to be fun, I think, is that you're going to see like an evolving background yeah and maybe some evolving camera angles i don't know i'll, I'll be driven crazy by <laughs> as on my rewatch i'll be like oh man oh, why did we do that why did we do that but uh we've got we've got I, I like this hey this is actually back to our roots and a little tiki touch <laughs> <laughs> have a little sip there you you drink first so i can talk and you can fill time while i talk there we go mm. new mugs brought to you by Red Five Designs. Mm, I love them. Thank you, Greg and Gianni. Beautiful. You thank know what? You, thank you. It's probably the best a beer has ever been held in a Wookie. You know, in a Wookie <laughs> mug and a Boba mug. <laughs> yes, the teaks are here. All right. Uh, welcome to everybody in the chat listening live. Appreciate you guys as always and gals. Um, and those catching it on the rewind, we'll get it up on iTunes here soon. Yep. yep. <laughs> You're gonna get slammed with. The whole plethora of uh, Hall of Chronicles, but Andy, you got something today? I did or today? This week? Today? today? Oh actually, wow! Today I was waiting for me when I got home from practice, and I've been wanting. Okay, let me set this up. I've been wanting these for a long time, and with an announcement that was made about a week ago, I figured now would be the time to get it because they might bump in price a little bit. You guys know what I'm talking about. Disney Plus is now having the Jendi Tarkovsky Clone Wars on Disney Plus. So Ooh. I got Ooh. all the figures. Is that is that all? <laughs> it's just, is that I just, it? You just I got, got all the figures? Yep. Oh my goodness. So all right, here we go. Oh, now we're gonna try something new today. We're going to throw a toy cam up on the screen. This is totally new. As you can see, we've got a little little action right here all right no, are, you, right. are you ready are you ready i'm gonna do it first time you gotta have the toy ready 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 boom ah oh, a little obi-wan huh obi-wan this is uh yeah mature obi-wan here very cool boom uh, now there's 14 of these josh you want to show all 14 absolutely rip them through if you can do it at that speed okay Actually, you can hand them to me okay. as you unwrap the rest, and I'll do a little... Great. Teamwork makes the Boom. dream Boom. We've got the clone trooper. 
Blammo. We'll just set him up there. We've got the clone trooper. <laughs> Different color. These guys are very awesome, though. It's awesome to hold these. I love that the art on the box is almost better than the that's than the figure. That was the thing that drew me to him right to... away is that the packaging was so radical. Yoda is pretty badass, so oh, I like him. You should see his back. force Look how, powers. How grumpy he is. He's grumpy Yoda. Yeah, yeah, we have in the chat. Uh, Matt says, I thought Andy was only going to do posters now, and Matt, you were mistaken. <laughs> so was I. No, uh, truthfully, I am. I'm doing posters. That's my focus. But this was more like, I better... First of all, I found a really good deal on them. That, that to me, is most important. What kind of a deal? And then um, the fact that they're going to be... On Disney Plus is probably going to bump their whoa, price whoa, up. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold bit. on, Clone Trooper. Yeah, there's four of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're not giving. We're not doing these justice, but we are ripping through fourteen. We're up to six now. This Ooh. one, he's got a little play on a cover of a of a recent comic book as well, the Doctor Afra comic book. So. Dirge. Dirge is classic. Dirge. Man. Let me read the back here while they look at the front. Through the creative vision of Lucasfilm and the Cartoon Network, the Clone Wars are... Oh, no. This is just a generic. I thought I was going to talk about Dirge. Sorry. Yeah. It's the same on the back it's of every not. one of these. But that's okay. Dirge is a cool dude, and the figure is fantastic. Dirge is rad. So Dirge is... See, now here's the deal. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for... Mm. The Disney Plus release. Here's an Asajj Ventress. She mm. looks scary as she looks like a Jack Skeleton. A little bit. Little little frightening right there. But um I, I will have watched the Tark how do you say it? Jendi Tarkovsky. Jendi Tarkovsky, uh I uh, April second will be the first time that I have ever dabbled. Since they were what? Kind of YouTube. These were two thousand four. Holy crap, look guys. Clone Trooper. A blue, a blue one. A blue one. He's new. Yeah, so they did this in two waves. Um Anakin. Anakin <laughs> looks like surge. Tarzan right now. I know. It's rad. His his uh bionic hand is really cool too. Dude, that's cool. Yeah, let's see if I can get the hand in there. Look at that action right there. Woo! Look at that mullet. <laughs> oh, or is that a... That's a little Padawan tail, looks like. There he is. We're going to stack these up so high they won't be able to see us when I change cameras. That's sweet. Yeah. We got Dooku. Dooku, that, that's what I love about Dooku. That character... Looks the same He looks everywhere. the same. No, no matter... You stylize him, he still looks the same. You know who Dooku is as soon as you see him. Master Kenobi. No, that's that's, that's the best right. I could do from Dooku. Mace lives. Had a baby. Mace lives. Mace lives. lives. Mace was so badass in that cartoon. All Force users are incredible. Paul, I got these on uh, eBay. Yeah, no big deal. I got them on eBay. I got a set of 14. Mace lives, 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 lives. This party's over. Yeah, it is. All right. Um, but I got these on eBay. I'll tell you the deal I got. They were 200 bucks for 14 and free shipping. Nice. So they were, you know, it comes out to be like 13, 14 bucks each. So that was Anakin Skywalker, the Padawan. This looks Padawanish too. I don't get it. Does he have a bionic? You, you got to watch the show. All right, I see. Thank you. That's what I wanted to hear. These figures are really cool, though. You wouldn't call them three and three quarter, would you? Yeah, you would. Yeah, they look bigger. They look like four and three quarter. Yeah. See, we're making a stack so big. And then the last one. Oh, mm. there he is. Very cool. Ooh, I like his cape and the 
All right, let's go to the let's go back to our our cam and just see see the stack that we yeah, made. Yeah, let's see what we look like here. That's how it's done. Yeah, we got a pile That's of crap. That's how you do a toy That's podcast. That's how you do a toy <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, um, let me know, guys who are listening, gals who are listening, following along. Do you guys have any of these? I think that the combination of the um, stylized animation plus the the uh, clever clone helmet packaging make these very desirable. Now you could get these again. You can get these right now anywhere packaged between ten and thirty bucks, depending on the the character. Um, I think that's a great deal, especially like you said. I think you called it with with probably some interest, some new interest coming. Hold on. Let's make this go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Looks badass. Um, uh, with some interest coming from the Disney Plus release of these episodes, I think you're looking at. I think you're looking at a good investment there if you were to try and unload them maybe let's say six months a year even after a little after people have had a chance to revisit it because it was only on cartoon network you know so what and it was a i don't know a two maybe three season run and and you can watch all the entire cartoon series in about two hours okay so it's not like there was a lot of episodes. It's not um, a Clone Wars issue where you have to go through four seasons before you realize you love it. Yeah, it's not. It's, okay. it's there's there's not a lot of dialogue. It's <clears throat> very action oriented, and the Force wielders can are just incredible, which gets me to leading to some conspiracy theories. But that's for another time. Uh, but that's what I got. That's what I got today. We got these mugs. So these are our gets. These are our gets. Well, plus one. Plus one. Plus one if in you a minute. To that. Yeah. This is a this is a new thing for us. I'm not used to having to look over at you. I usually like I'm looking from over there. It's very new. I'm feeling I'm feeling good. Andy. Do you like this? Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, I'm sure people would let us know if they like it or not, or if it's yeah, just we'll too see. weird. It doesn't matter. We can go back to wherever tomorrow. Um, all right. What's next? Well, uh four new black series figures were announced. Um few days ago and i like what their strategy was here these are for the 50th anniversary um, lucasfilm 50th anniversary figures that they did two known and two um what would you call them uh legends okay characters well i guess technically they're all kind of legends. three of the four yeah, are yeah. yeah but but two known characters and two characters that are maybe lesser known and more cult favorites than um, on the forefront. And these would be, of course, the, um, the Luke Skywalker from the Thrawn series uh, and Darth Maul shirtless. <laughs> let's start with Skywalker. Okay, let's just start with Skywalker here. <laughs> now, Josh, did you know... Now, you, did you read the Thrawn trilogy, the original I did, Thrawn? I did. So that little creature around his neck is a force-sucking... It's a force-sensitive being, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that what they could... Ah, gosh, I'm trying to recall, because he was on this planet, he lands outside, he's he's like investigating Thrawn's operation, and yeah, man, I, I'll have to go back and read him. If you only read a book once... Actually, I did the audio version of the book, so I was just enthralled mm. with uh, Mark Thompson's... Enthroned? Enthroned with Mark <laughs> Thompson's... Um, character voices so I, I really didn't pay attention to the story that makes sense no these force sensitive guys were like a or yeah yeah they absorb the force so they can kind of dampen it and i think thrawn was going to use them to to counter a jedi is what he was right because he's no dummy right master strategist right so um there's there's this luke and he kind of looks like um empire strikes back luke but yeah, in black sand of, sleeves. Yeah, so <laughs> you know it, he he does look similar to one that look, exists he didn't already. Spend but. all that time doing one arm handstands and not have his guns out, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Good on you, Luke. Um, but then we move to the other known figure, and that was Darth Maul. And this this Maul is pretty 
pretty tough looking, pretty rad. Yeah, I, I know Luke. He, Luke was trying, but <laughs> Maul is succeeding. There's, there's got to be something <laughs> said for genetics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So hate gets you abs. <laughs> but this was uh, this was the only one that I put a pre order in for. Really? Yeah. Because I've got a little so, mall. I've got a little mall corner. So see, that's how you and I are different. Because I look at them and I'm like, oh, let's say just like you. I was like, man, I really like mall. Then I would have to get the other three. But I you can just buy one. I so can I because I'm not a Black Series collector. Yeah. I'm not a vintage collection collector. I'll get one on occasion, but uh, I don't feel the need to complete. You know what I mean? That's different. That's different for me. That's okay. But mall looks We're good. different. So you and um, I are different. And these happens. characters are coming from comic books, right? Um, these comic books. Yes. So they're well, book legends and then some comics. Yeah. So yeah. we never actually saw this version in of Maul in any movie or even animated series. But that looks like a comic cell right there. So maybe yeah. somebody in the chat can help us because I'm not as versed in comics as some might be, but it it's a great depiction of Maul. And we can't even Yeah, yeah, Jackson can help us. And speaking of Jackson, um, we'll get there. So the next figure went through a bit of a, a name snafu what? Uh, he's named carnor Jax, according to this but it's actually a different character oh so you think so they messed up they did they made a mistake and then they corrected it hasbro uh, oh. within a day or two did they release this no all? this Dang is it. this is just on pre-order um but they fixed the name and the difference is that the character that they named him after in this picture looks exactly the same, but he's got more black on his uh, persons. Mm. But he looks very similar, and that's why the name changed. It's, it's the classic for Lom and Zekas switcheroo. Mm -hmm. Hasbro classic. still can't get their shit together. Yeah, it's classic. Uh, yes, Kira Kanos, I believe, is the correct Kira name Kanos. of this figure. Because, um, you know, I was really worried about that instead of Kanor Jax. Yes, this is a character that I'm, you think I'm not familiar with. You think they just put letters into a machine and it spits out names and like... Like Boggle? Ink it. You yeah. know that game? Yeah, I do. Okay, yeah. just shake up the letters and see what happens. See what happens, yeah. That, okay. is, that is how you become a character in Star Wars. All right. All and right. then finally, this dude, who I only know from Force Connect Fridays on the Beyond the Blast Wars Network with Jackson... Right there's his uh, the Leppy. There's his avatar right there, which is Jackson the Space Rabbit. Yeah, where are his hate abs? Mm. Doesn't have any. I don't know. I've never seen Jackson without his shirt on. <laughs> Jackson. I thought that we've had enough Force Connects. I thought that would happen by now. <laughs> so um, I don't know he, anything about this character. Yeah, I I still don't. He's a comic book. Hero so, is what he so is. So let me ask you this, or let's ask Jackson in the chat. Okay. Uh, they put, I mean, that's that's a big run, right? Black Series, when they put a run out, mm -hmm. and not, well, not a, a series, big run, a, a series. series four, or they put yeah. a series, and they're running. Look, that's not a remold, obviously. No, nope, We don't have a lot original. of rabbit-headed. This is the first time Jackson's got a, got a figure. So do you think Jackson, the leppy, comic book character deserved a figure before i don't know a lot of other figures well th that's a fair point josh because i know like uh darth mark from the palaboys said it's uh, and you know i understand there's some cult hero status for jackson but we still haven't had a black series hammerhead yet right you know so that's a good point so i i i get that but i also understand too trying to incorporate into a wave, some known and some new, right? So they got a Luke and a Maul, which so, are very popular figures, arguably two of the top five. Yeah, for sure. And then with that, you're bringing along two lesser known. So you still want to make the so wave they're, they're getting analyzing enough. They're to, getting suckers like me who I want to buy Maul or I want to buy Luke, and then I have to buy the whole series because I'm a chump. You're not a chump. That's just how you collect. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they reeled you in. They reeled you in. Yeah. So. Yeah, Jackson says all his homies uh, 
hate Hammerhead anyway, so <laughs> I understand <laughs> where he's coming from. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a young Anakin Skywalker would be a good Black Series figure too. You know, got, can't disagree with uh, Gilster there. Do we have a Do we have a Watto Black Series? We do, don't we? Do we? No. I don't. I have a lot of Black Series. I don't know if I have a Watto. No, we don't have a Watto Black Series. Just another in a long line of figures that they can put out. Oh, hold on. Uh, Watto's going... I'm just kidding. He's not <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Watto. 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 <laughs> he's, he's down. I don't know where he went. I don't know. We he probably was, shoved him off the edge. He might have. He might have jumped. Yeah. Well, yeah. anyway. Well, those are very cool characters uh, that you showed and also the Black Series. I think the Jackson's kind of cool because it shows Hasbro... I don't know, maybe understanding the fandom a little better. Yeah, there's there's a fair amount of people that love Star Wars in the 90s and enjoyed them in the comic books when there wasn't Star Wars movies coming out. And and this is maybe a little how do you do to those fans. So I, I, I don't, I'm not mad at it. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting character, uh, at least when I'm talking about Jackson. It's an interesting character. Now I want to go find out more about it. Mm -hmm. I'll probably read half a comic or something. And Okay. Or maybe just Wikipedia. Star Wars comic episode eight, or comic number eight, is the first appearance of Jackson the Rabbit. And what year? That would be in 1980. So are they trying to do like... 1980? Are, are, are they pulling some kind of Looney Tunes connection or something? I mean, what are they doing? No, I think they're just... They're like Rabbit Cell? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you Roger go, Rabbit? If, if you, like... Okay, here's a connection here. Like in Marvel, Howard the Duck exists it was yeah it's terrible right <laughs> so i mean like they'll pull just like regular creatures that we have on earth but make them mm. you know talk, sentient they can talk, sentient that yeah. was the word thank you i was gonna yes. say animated but they're already animated they are all right moving along josh right. uh the away, Andy. the mandalorian retro figures have started showing up in stores i haven't seen any around us yet mm -mm. But there's seven, as in typical retro series figures go. There were seven Star Wars. There were seven Empire Strikes Back. Now there are seven Mandalorian figures. How do you feel about this retro line? I like them. Okay. Um, I feel like you and, like for me personally, you and I spent so much energy on the first four. Oh, man, did we? So much energy that after that, the I The first felt... seven. No, I mean, the, you mean the, the Star Wars line. Star Wars line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we spent so much energy on that, and we went from target to target to target. I mean, over multiple weeks. Right. All the way from, like, Seattle, Tacoma to Portland. To when the ever, whenever somebody drove by a target, we swung in. We did. It, for, like, what was it, like two months? So do you think, because, yeah, it was. We were it was invested. two months. And we got a lot of people some retro figures, We did. Too. We did score some retros. We kept a set for ourselves. I think I still a, have a set. I still have my set, too. An extra set, I mean. Oh, an extra. Of the original run. Mm. So hit me up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering, uh, my personal feeling is like after that expenditure, I was a little spent. How about you? Um, yeah. Ask me how many Empire Strikes Back ones I have. Exactly. That's where I'm at. Like I, I won. Ex I didn't go after any of them. And now this new line comes out. I want a reason to be excited about them again. And I think the reason I wasn't, I was a little put off by the Tarkin in the Death Star, you know, Tarkin was actually one I was after because that's a figure we never got in vintage and he he had his vintage style. So I, I, I get what they're doing with the Mandalorian because now they're taking, you know, characters you never would have received in vintage style and, and putting it out for you. But is that appealing to the masses or has that ship sailed? I guess would be my question. Um, I think that... <sighs> I see. I'm getting. I've pre-ordered all of the Mando retro figs. Okay. Um, and here's why. Here's why I am. I'm gonna take them out of the package. Okay. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna set them up next to my display with all of my original characters because they look like they belong. They've got the five points of articulation. They've got vinyl capes, right? Okay. So this is something that they did that. Well, the Lando has a vinyl cape, but they they tried to kind of go retro y to another degree that um, that I appreciate. Vinyl capes. It would have been cool if I've said this many times, but it would have been cool if Moff Gideon had a black telescoping yeah, yeah. telescoping saber coming out of his arm. But 
Um, they did go vinyl capes. The, the, the characters look really good. Um, and so I'm going to get a set and I'm actually going to take them out of the package. And I put up a poll actually on Twitter and it was about two thirds, keep it in the packaging one third, uh, take them out, which is probably not surprising, but I'm going to be in the take them out. Um, well, I mean, they're, the price point's good enough that you could buy two anyway, right? Yeah, they're like 12 bucks each. Yeah. Now, to Gary's point, and I can see Gary's comment down here. It says, Retro Mandalorian before Return of the Jedi, just wrong. But, Gary... No, I'm gonna, whoa, don't say it's Jesus. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to check him just real quick. The Star Wars and the Empire Strikes Back retro figures aligned with the 40th anniversaries. Okay. Okay? So... I imagine in 2023, we're going to get retro Return of the Jedi, seven figures, start your predictions now on which ones they'll be. And in between now and then, you're going to get a Mandalorian set. And maybe we'll get a Rogue One set, or maybe we'll get a Solo set, mm. or maybe we'll even get an animated series set, mm. you know? So like a Rebel set, that would be cool. A Rebels retro set, it'd be kind of cool. So I think, I think, Gary, I think we're going to get some, but not yet. I, I, it's inevitable, well, right? And that, we'll get some. That kind of comes off of my comment of like, how popular is the line? And, and for me, I, I think the line was interesting because of the rarity of finding it in the wild. I didn't go after the line anywhere else. It was only if I could go find them in stores. Right. And it, and it may be, well, and then COVID, I guess that, I, I know, it's weird to not take that into consideration, but COVID hit and you weren't going to stores as much. Uh, Pre-ordering or just ordering offline was, was the easier way to do things, safer way. So it might have turned me off a little bit. Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to find my love again, and actually, maybe your take on this might be the way that it, it rekindles is to take them out of their packaging, put them on display next to vintage line, and kind of, kind of, kind of imposter them into your bit. into your collection. Especially yeah. Tarkin. I mean, Tarkin's such a cool figure. Oh yeah, such a, a main character. I mean, he was the. It's funny. Wouldn't you say Tarkin was the emperor of New Hope? I mean, he was he really the was. main bad guy. Yeah. Even though Vader got all the glory, he was the main bad guy. He blew no. up a planet. Yeah. And Vader watched. Definitely. That's about it. He blew it up in front of the princess of that planet. Right. Tarkin, After she Tarkin's told power him, was the Death Star. Right. Vader's power was the dark side. Right. And they both flexed in their own ways. So maybe movie. a better play by Lucas, but for, you know, because we all thought Vader was the bad guy, right? But it could have been just because we took, like, let's say that New Hope stood alone by itself. Who was See, the ultimate bad I, guy in New, New Hope? I still thought Vader answered to Tarkin. Me too. D don't you think? I did. Well, he followed his, well, he's Moff Tarkin. So yeah, he could have been instructed. But anyway, anyway, anyway. So, yeah. I might rekindle my love for this new line, but you pre-ordered all those? Are they still available? You can pre-order them on some sites still, yeah. Right. I think uh, I think your best shot actually might be GameStop. Okay. Well, there's stocks through the roof. Or is it still? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't play that game. Should have, but I did. Uh, yeah, yeah. You had to buy a game. Yeah, no. I, I. By the way, if you need a Tarkin, let me know. <laughs> Josh has a few. I have several Tarkins. Yeah. We, uh, I'm a dumbass. Well, I thought that, that we, I thought, we, I, yeah, we both went in on that. I thought that Tarkin would kind of take off because like he I was hard said, to find originally. He was. And then they like made a bunch more. And after, then he became baby. Yoda. After we, yeah, he, he did. <laughs> he became the child. Uh, Ugh. yeah, that's grand moff to you, Josh. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Josh. Cheers, Thanks, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Nick. Nick <laughs> did got, he give? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably did. But again, uh, we, don't worry. I got we more. We distributed. We distributed as many retro Star Wars we did. figures as Target. We did. did in the Pacific we did. Northwest. So. Absolutely. Um, that was fun. That was. It was fun. a time I'll look back fondly on. All right, but okay. Next, next. There was a an announcement with no pictures, really. Yeah, we have nothing. Other than just the announcement, and I know Josh, you and I are both fans of Lego and yes. Star Wars Lego in particular, and in even more particular, the UCS series, Ultimate mm -hmm. Collector series. And they announced there was an announcement that the next 
ultimate collector series project by Lego was going to be a Republic gunship. And I couldn't be happier. That is one of your favorite vehicles. That is one of my favorite vehicles. I've got, I've got a, I do have a Lego one already, but it's, it's not obviously a UCS, but it's still a very cool set. Um, I've got a vintage collection, one of these, and it is a very cool vehicle. And plus, you guys know that I'm a clone guy, and this is their this is their primary mode of transportation. So, I'm down with this. This probably will be, you know, a few months ago there was leaked some future sets. They had code names and prices attached mm-hmm. to them. I do believe this one's going to carry a price tag of eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars. That's more than the. The Star Destroyer. That's the same as the Star Destroyer. I thought it was six. Or is that the Falcon? I thought the Star was six. I mean, it is now. Maybe, eight. maybe the Star Destroyer was 900. I don't know. But anyway, I think I think this would be the 800 set. So. I don't know about that. So I. Um, that's a spendy one. I don't. I know once I see it, I'm going to be like. But then I'm gonna be like, ooh, eight hundred bucks. That's a original Empire Strikes Back poster right there. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna have to do one of these where I'm like, oh, what would I rather have? Seven hundred dollars for the Imperial Star Destroyer. You can still get it. I mean, you're close. You can still get it on. Um, let me make sure the Lego site. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, geez, I have to accept all these cookies. Yep. Rate my computer, Lego. Go for it. Just rate it. Um, yeah, you can still, you can you can still grab it for six ninety nine ninety nine. So interesting. So, but I know you're a big fan. Actually, a few episodes ago, I don't know, a few months ago, you brought your gunship that you'd acquired, mm-hmm. which is pretty awesome. So, what makes you want to make it in Lego form? Well, first of all, it's probably going to be something like close to 2000 pieces yeah so it'll take a while it'll be kind of a fun project uh gonna take a little bit of time to do and i appreciate that it's pr- it's just gonna be well made you know it's gonna be well made it's gonna have some cool little features on it um you know movable doors and probably some exclusive figures with it and you know mini figures and all that but so let me ask a real question okay last week you move you showed that you had moved your entire lego collection into your son's room i did so for eight hundred dollars you want to plop this in your in dash's room uh well that's a fair (laughs) fair question now dash would love it but (laughs) you're right i don't i don't know the most i've ever spent on a lego is is the ton of four yeah. And that's a that's a four or five hundred dollar set, but I got it used for three hundred. Yeah. So I mean, and it's massive and it's beautiful, but I, I don't know if I could but the only I, thing I, I, I honestly, Josh, I'm probably not gonna get it, but it's speaking my love language. I see. You know what I mean? So you can't wait to see it in somebody else's I can't collection. wait to see somebody else get that and put it together and, and do a time lapse and I might check it is, and say it's probably going to be a four ninety nine. Is it going to be a Josh? Can I enjoy this in Josh's? I don't know. I don't you know, know me, I just buy Legos and leave them in the box. Yeah. That's what I do. I'm an idiot. Yeah. yeah. So. Who knows? <clears throat> I don't know. You going to get it? I don't know. You tell me. Chat, you getting this? Gary says that it's $0.10 cents a, a piece. A <laughs> Lego? Jeez Louise. <laughs> That's a lot. No, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's too much. What you do is you you get the uh, you get the plans online, and then you go to a Lego store and you just start buying <laughs> white pieces and red pieces, and you put it together. That's there are people that do that, by the way. That's too much. It'll take you time, but it'll save you probably six hundred dollars. Right. You take all that time off work. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Oh, oh I don't know. I don't know. Two meds in the room. Hey. Hello. What's up, two med? Two med. Um anyway. All right. That's that's good. Okay. So I'm I'm happy for that announcement. I'm ha- I, I hope that that can cross our table, so to speak, in the future. We'll see. Maybe a build. You know, maybe it's a combo action. Yeah. Maybe know. we get sponsored by Lego. 
What's up, Lego? Maybe one of our friends and family will kick us one, and we'll send it back to them once we build it. <laughs> if you're going to buy it, send it to we us. We won't put it back in the bags, but yeah. We'll... <laughs> Look, I mean, maybe. I don't we'll know. take it apart and throw it in the box. Um, so, uh, oh, let's see. Michael has a good question here. The Condor. Does Hasbro Pulse charge you when you order the items or when the items are shipped? I pre-ordered something months ago. I need to know if I need to switch my payment method. Let me think about this because... I know an ans- I know a partial answer to this. If you pre-ordered the HasLab project, they took that money out yeah, within a they're, month. They're paying for... As it goes. Yeah, they're pay- it's like a Kickstarter. They're paying for the project. Right. Now regular items i don't think they charge you until they ship my issue is is i haven't done a pulse item in a while i do know that sideshow like sideshow when you buy their pre-orders they'll take a deposit and so you'll pay 70 dollars or 50 dollars, and then they'll hit you with the remainder of the balance right before because i've been shocked when i saw a charge come up and then realized that six months ago i i, I pre-ordered a hot toy and it was on its way. Uh, six months ago, it seemed like a great idea. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey. When you get nailed with the rest, you're like, oh, damn it. Hey. Did I really need easy. that? Well, Scooby Pete says when it ships for like the... Yeah, he's probably right. The, I non, think the non-Haslab. There's got to be like a hold or something they put on there. But other than that, yeah, yeah when it ships. Because I think there's some laws against that. They can't charge you for it until they can deliver. But there you go. All right. Next topic. Entertainment Earth. Familiar? What's that? Are you familiar? Yes, with of course I am. Of course, shows you are. up on my door every other day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Entertainment Earth. If you go on Entertainment Earth right now, what you'll find, and it's not under the Star Wars uh, content on Entertainment Earth, but they have one twelfth dioramas for Marvel scenes and some like video game kind of scenes, and they're cool. All right. Now again, they're not Star Wars related. So if you're into other genres, other uh, brands, then, uh, you know, maybe you go look at this. But it got me thinking that just to make a little cardboard diorama, um, it probably is pretty cost efficient. You know, you Mm. charge 20, 30 bucks for a well-cut piece of cardboard. And and, and it kind of harkens back to the original Star Wars stuff. But there aren't really any mass-produced dioramas that you can buy for Star Wars. You can get some custom ones on eBay or Etsy or, you know, some 3D printed ones even um, on some sites will have those. But I was just thinking, Josh, are there any, like, backdrops that you would think are pretty cool that you could put some figures in front of, you know, vintage or modern? Sure, sure. I mean, definitely, like, Jabba's Palace would be very cool because they've already come out with, like, Jabba's Throne. It has a little more back drop with the vintage collection but to have like the palace on would be kind of cool mm. you know some of the ot stuff would be very very uh nostalgic. interesting and nostalgic to me i'm not the biggest diorama guy but mostly from the standpoint that everyone that i've owned has been pretty beat up so when i look at it i kind of get not disappointed but right. i don't know sad like oh, i wish that looked better i could use it you know here or there in my displays but you know what they do originally they did hoth they yeah, did. There was some Hoth. There was some Death Tatooine. Star. Um, Paul says Death Star. Uh, Halle backdrops. Yeah. Halle? Halle? Halle. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to interpret that maybe too. Maybe he fat fingered it. And Paul or maybe that's correct. I don't no, know. I mean, that's probably some super but awesome. I think uh, cool uh, thing. Uh, like the. Like the uh, command center of like a, a of an imperial star destroyer, mm-hmm. you know that would be kind of cool. You could put like your um, or how about Yavin? Same same concept. Oh yes, a Yavin shot that would be cool too. Where you like got the some door, of those, like those the monitors, door, yeah. or, or those those like uh, yeah, the big, big glass monitors. hollow monitors or the door to Yavin would be cool behind like an X wing sitting on the ground because you use that for Rogue One and for. Mm. And for Star Wars, yeah, if you yeah. Wanted to. Uh, this should read Death Star, <laughs> Deet Hallway Star Hallway, the yeah. Deet Star. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, that'll keep the mosquitoes away. Yeah, but uh... <laughs> they have mosquitoes on the Death Star. Maybe Probably. on the Deet Star. Yeah, when you got that many, they yeah. have bed bugs. I'll tell you that. Much. 
But yeah, anyway, Jedi Jedi Council Chambers is a great one. Yeah, that is a so, that I mean, a good one. So I mean, and that's if you're, if you're loving the dioramas, right? Right. If you if you like your displays to have something behind them, you know what I mean? Some pictures or anything like that. So I this um this leads perfectly into Josh. A fellow that I came across on Twitter a few months ago and then reconnected with him here this week. A guy by the name of Lee He's uh, he's from the land of Great Britain, <laughs> the Britons. Britons. Who are the Britons? The island. We are. We're all Britons, and I'm your king. Yes. King of the who? <laughs> Jesus. Okay. All right. Well, he's still going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this this gentleman Lee, his name's Lee Gregory. He's had a dream to make a playset for 20 years now and in the last four years he's actually put together like a prototype and he's been working on kind of over the last since 2017 he's been working on creating a prototype that is functional and is reminiscent of the vintage line of of play sets and if we could josh if you could pull up a picture of the original Palatoy Death Star. Yeah, that one right there. Okay, so in this picture right here, you've got a Death Star Palatoy um, original playset on the right. Okay, some of you perhaps might have seen one of these before. Uh, they also released them in Canada, but they never were released in the United States. It's a completely cardstock playset that is 360 degrees and multi-tiered it's two actually three tiered um there's a there's a gunner right on the very tip top of this um but then there's a second tier in the middle and then the the, the basement or bottom tier mm. and it's very cool this is a big play set um a while ago i got one and i did a little video on it from i do my i remember basement. that yeah so this is this is awesome. Okay, it's an awesome playset, but like all things that are forty years old in cardstock or cardboard or corrugated, they don't hold up well over time. Mm -mm. So finding these now is becoming tougher and tougher, especially in England. I mean, all the rain and fog and sadness. <laughs> not that the Pacific Northwest is much better. No, we are the England but, of the U.S. Uh, no, this is not Darth Marks. Um, so this is this is where the inspiration for Lee's project comes from. And I'm setting this up a little bit. And next to that, to the left, is the Action Force HQ, which is um, parallel to G.I. Joe in the United States. Action Force was, again, a UK version, you know, of Army action figures. Mm -hmm. action the Force. UK version. Yeah. They had billy clubs. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm gonna get ripped. Okay, right. uh, but you can see that there is some similarity. It's two tiered with with a landing pad on top instead of a gunner seat, and it's more uh, squarish, rectangular than it is circular. I will tell you, circular displays are hard to display yes. because most they just stick out and right. Most shelving units are you know are rectangular, so. Um, Oh, Scuba Pete has the Action Force HQ. He does. So anyway, I, I show you these because these are the inspiration behind what Lee wanted to do. Lee wanted to make a Bespin playset that that kind of modeled after this, a cardstock version. Now, before we show you some of his prototype pictures, I want to show you the original vintage Bespin playset. Okay, so here's the box, and here's the actual playset. All right? This was sold in the United States. It was not a largely popular playset. Um, it is very thin cardstock, and even in good shape, it's pretty flimsy. Right. Um, do you have one of these, Josh? You know, I'm. That's why I'm. I'm sitting here studying it. I think I did. Okay. I did, and, and and if I do, it it might be boxed up, but I don't. I don't have one on display. Ah, man, it looks familiar, though. Yeah, so this did come with uh, four figures, and you can see them pictured. Um, the, the box 
also pictured, but this is a, this is a very flimsy. It's very, it, it tore apart easily. Um, it was not very stable or sturdy. And so I think that was a big reason why it wasn't super popular. Now, these are a pretty penny nowadays. Um, Could the reason have been that it was cardboard? Uh, or takes a drink. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I, I, I just struggle with these a little bit. But yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I do have one of these and it's it, it's cool. I mean, but it definitely does not hold up very well. Um, it's just like a it's more like a diorama you just put things in front of it you don't actually now is it's not usable you, do you have a little bit of the story behind why they made dioramas in the first place i think we talked about this once before was it because of kind of their lack of production capabilities and so they threw up some like we can we can make a quick scene without having to build you know a, a model toy a plastic toy isn't that the case that they they kind of threw those out there I, I think I'm remembering that. I could be remembering wrong, but I thought it was a little bit of a kind of a limp in, kind of like the mail, like the early bird series, and like, well, and you got to understand too. You could put a Star Wars logo on anything, and it was going to sell, right? And so, just having the ability to do a little playset, little scene, uh, something with a little color behind it, you know, I think sure this is this is how I mean, this is how you built your worlds at home, sure. You know? Especially if you're just like kicking a rock in the '80s, like most of us were. <laughs> most, of, yeah. most of us were. So anyway, the these Bespin. So this is this is the original. Now, Lee's vision is to take this idea but turn it into something like the Palatoy ah, playset, like this, like that, like, like this those exactly. Okay. So these next couple pictures here, um, these are actually Lee's. Oh, that's kind of cool See, so, because it's it's got some dimension that's that's what i'm saying all the all the dioramas or whatever you call them the cardboard mm -hmm. whatever's are all one dimensional mm -hmm. with maybe the pop out with the uh, sand crawler i think is the one i have that's yeah it. and there was an ad at version too. right and yeah. i don't have that one yes so this is this is lee's prototype okay and what you see on the left here is a landing pad for like uh the slave one yeah, um, that, I, and love, that would, I love that. I love that. That would fit the Slave One on it, and it folds up to wrap over the top, and you can put the cloud car on top, oh, like you see there. Yeah, we can. Right. So if you don't want to, if you don't have the room, you can. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. The <laughs> rolling the tandem. peacocks of the, <laughs> the <fly. peacocks. laughs> of the Star Wars pilot universe. Um, yeah. So so anyway, <laughs> so Lee is is constructing and you can see from these from these pictures right here this is not just some you know do it on a whim like i said he's been working on this for he's been thinking of this for more than four years but for the last four years he's been working on a usable um practical prototype but how did he do this this is insane like so he created the prints and and, and has had them manufactured yes. or whatever well they're they're not mass produced yet but he's hoping uh to get to a point very soon that maybe he can do a kickstarter ah. and, and for anybody that wants to invest or if he can get a certain amount of investment that maybe enough people would want something like this and i can tell you i can tell you that i am all in on this okay i love this and we've got one more picture to put up there too and I think once you see this and and some of the some of the rooms that that you could have um, for scenery, that um, you know Star Wars has a history of reusing parts and and like like we were just talking about with the diorama, the the sand crawler um, playset and the Adat playset yeah, had the same base, same base, it's just yep. different color. Yep, you know they uh, took the uh, they took the. The escape pod and what they put in place of the escape pod um, on the at at because the escape pod was there for the was it a, was it like a, a laser dish something like cannon? that yeah just kind of slid into the same little bubble yeah so um, I um, I I I couldn't be more excited about this and I think I think Lee's done a really clever job of like that is what Han is sitting in is from can do you recognize it 
Uh, yes, that is from the Millennium Falcon. Yes, and uh, now it turret. doubles as the thing that had all the needles in went into yeah, his chest. Yeah, and leaned forward and screamed. So, and... Um, so there's there's all these little pockets, you know, 360 degrees around this where you can put in figures and do a playset. That's pretty cool. Them. It's really I'm, cool. I'm, I'm liking this. And so um, in talking with Lee this week, you know, I, ideally we'd have him on, and I think we are going to have him on. Good. Um, and when he gets to the point where he wants to, if he decides to do like a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe or something like that, we'll have him on. We'll promote it. Um, I am in 100% support of this project. Lee seems like a stand-up guy. And you know he is a huge Star Wars fan to do something like this, oh. to be thinking about it, to then actually That's execute it. That's a lot of work. It. It's a ton of work. He's not Hasbro. No, he's just, he's He's Libro. He's Libro. Yeah. And so I know, I know he's going to watch this and see it. And so I, I couldn't be more excited about what you're doing, Lee. And I hope, and I think there's going to be a lot of support. I mean, that's just art. That's That's fan art art. right there, especially when it comes to something. Labor of love. Yeah. Labor of love. It's functional. It's something that would be ultimately unique in your collection. Some, nobody else is going to have that if you, if you get that off the top. Right. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. I, I like it. I like it. I am not the biggest diorama fan, but I already gave my reason. It's because every one that I owned was in poor, poor shape. And so I couldn't I couldn't even display it properly without kind of I don't know, not embarrassed, but kinda of like it didn't fit with my with my motif, so to speak. Yeah. So stay tuned, all of our listeners and fans. Um, there's more more of this coming. So be yeah. re- be ready. Yeah. Be ready. I'm and he's I didn't show a picture of it, but he's got a box for it too, mm. and the box is is a nice nod to the original Bespin playset box, um, like we showed earlier, and uh, and it's uh, again, I can't say enough good stuff about it. I'm very excited about it. I'm excited for Lee, and anything we can do to support him um, is going to be is going to we're going to do everything we can. Standing by, standing by. We are standing by. Yep. So, all right. Um, Josh, we do have a spinner. Not a Star we don't Wars have a spinner. Star Wars spinner. Not a Star Wars spinner. We have a we have, we have a Red Five Designs toy review. Toy. Yes, yes, we do. And Josh, <laughs> I'll let you take the lead on this because it is yours. All right. So as I've already mentioned, from time to time, things show up at my door, and you know what I like. I have what I like to call pre-order. Pre-order itis. I can't even say it. See, see, I can't say it. My brain tries to erase it before I say it out loud. Um, <laughs> pre-order itis, where I love to pre-order things and then they show up and I'm shocked by them. It's actually one of my my favorite traits about myself. Oh, yeah. I, you know what's one of my favorite traits about you? Too. I know, I know. <laughs> so um, from time to time, things just show up at my doorstep and I'm like, damn it! And and I and I got one. So this this time around. I'm very fortunate. I, I'm happy with this one. This okay. one's pretty good. And you know that I'm oh, on a cool. hot toys kick. Yes. He's now we have we have um, presented many spinning hot toys, uh, courtesy of Red Five Designs, that are not in our collection. No. But this time, this one is staying in my collection. Staying state stateside. So without uh, for, yeah, for sure. Without further ado, here is my latest hot toy. Is you going to do the red, the red five? Oh, yeah, I forgot. And without further ado, <laughs> with, with, with some further ado, the, the this is for the sure. <laughs> Here we're back. There it is. It's a Red 5 Designs toy. What is Red 5 Designs doing for us? They're, they're the collectors? They're giving us first shot at some of the things that they get so that we can preview and review them um yes they're and awesome. and we can support them by promoting their kickstarter for a star they wars got an amazing toy book book coming out everyone should buy you've if you've watched us at all you know this is coming but this is it this is it it's the deluxe mandalorian with child with extra child with pram with with all kinds of crap, all kinds of accessories. It's ridiculous. This is so cool, and I like that you've posed him flying with. Well, uh, the here's kid. the deal. Here's the deal. 
and his feet aren't even off the ground. So let's just pretend that he's, he's just taken ready. off. All right. Um, but we got a little crap, right? We got a little crap. We we've been putting some of these hot toys up. Um, in, I don't know. In very unoriginal, straight up, like you know, like, <laughs> like a normal, at attention, bipedal, whatever. <laughs> but we got in trouble. <laughs> we got in trouble for non <laughs> non exciting non exciting poses. And so I put this guy in a nice little uh, a nice little flying pose. These these okay. Let me just start. I was I was going off on shtick there. Let me just start. These hot toys, everything you see, and I tried to do a good job of getting everything that comes with this out on display, but everything you see there comes in this kit, and it's not all usable. Like, uh, you can't use all the stuff in one pose. This is definitely made for the person. What, we had Chris on last week, who I love, who cycles stuff in. Yeah, he rotates He, he rotates his collection. And... That is a better man than I. Like, I want to set the collection, set and forget, is what I want to do. But this guy is amazing. So you've got the pram, you've got the child in his. You got two children. Two children. You've <laughs> got the child in his classic pose up front. You can most definitely do the pose that was a, where you first saw the child, where you've got the Mandalorian sticking his finger down towards the child, and you can take your own glamour shots if you want of that. But most importantly, he's full Beskar. He's got the Mudhorn Beskar. Pauldron, pauldron which you can see down there by his foot by his foot um we you can even see the little blue thing that's the mandalorian hologram that he gives moff gideon the business with when he tells him when he repeats you know moff gideon's uh line back to him you don't know how you have what is it you have no idea how important that is or blah yeah. blah blah whatever i'm paraphrasing you've got the uh ice cream maker full of beskar and I don't know if you can tell. Is it still lit up? I don't know. I think it turned it might off. Have turned off. It might have a timer. There's on. a light in there, that ice yeah, cream maker. There, okay. Can I tell a story about the light in that ice cream Do maker? Do it. Do it. So I'm a little pissed off that it's not on right now, because uh, here's what happened: the batteries that come with that light to power that light are the size of a grain of sand. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. I'm sorry. I'm exaggerating. They're the size no. <laughs> of a piece of rice. <laughs> there we go. That's, that's more accurate. That's more accurate. And there's three of them. And you have to plug said batteries into this little compartment that has a spring in it. So the third time I was on the floor looking for the little battery of three, or all three, or maybe two of three, that had been launched into the air, into my carpet, I kind of came to like I I I I, I kind of calmed down because the first time there were curse words and the second time there were more curse words in front of my children, but then the third time I just came into this very this zone where like you know don't be angry about things you can't control is how I felt and you know like like the weather or is it oh good 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 the weather or. Uh, when the McRib is coming back, I, I'm talking about things you can't control. And so I, I know, and I calmly uh, found all three batteries. And then I developed my own system for getting these batteries in place, which I am going to sell on Etsy uh, via a link to a private YouTube video because it's impossible. After an hour, I got them in and you still can't see the light even from here. But there you go. I digress. Uh, anyway. It's amazing. You've got the flamethrower that you can attach to his arm. You've got the uh, the whistling birds. What, what are they called? Whistling birds, right? Yeah. Right here. Yeah. You've got the birds. Uh, you've got uh, that you can attach to his wrist, and they look like the kind of the little smoke. Um, hold that little smoke piece up, if you could. There. Uh, yeah. The whistling birds. Um, these those attached so you can have him pointing at something uh what andy just showed were the birds when they flare out like when he gets like and the and the child like closes his pram because he sees them flare out they've got that i mean it's so cool you've got a grappling hook um you've got the jet pack that comes on and off magnetically you've got an extra uh, thermal detonator you've got uh the fob you've got a dagger that goes into his boot uh you've got an extra little uh, uh ingot of beskar that you can you know trade with if you if you so desire what else is there is there the cords on the side of the 
oh, that's right. You can put the headlamp on his head if you want, which I did put on. Um, and the medallion, the mud horn medallion that you can put around the child's neck. This deluxe doesn't even, I mean, that's one pose. I mean, obviously I can have him holding his blaster um, uh, with the gun on his slung against his back with the, with the, uh, the jet pack down on the ground with Boba Fett holding it hostage, whatever. I can do whatever I want with this. It is a fantastic piece. I can't say enough about Hot Toys. I know they're not cheap. But if you're talking about, you know, let's say twenty to twenty-five dollars to thirty dollars for a black series, that's pretty good. These one-six scales will make your collection for the price of ten black series, we'll say, or fifteen, whatever, yeah. depending on the price. So, um, I, I am whistling birds. Thank you. What was I calling them? Well, we were calling them whistling birds. I think right? We're calling them that. Or smoking birds or whatever. Yeah, depends on your. Depends on the kind of day you're having. Smoking Jays. <laughs> Smoking Jays. Um, but yeah, these that's are. That's a store in that's Long, a, that's where a we store live. Called Smoking Jays. Absolutely. Jays. Smoking Jays. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, we're not sponsored by them either. <laughs> um, Yet. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, fantastic toy. We love, we love spinning these hot toys. I know that that has been the primary focus of our spins lately. Yeah. But give me a break. We've, Why wouldn't we spin we've these? We've put a lot. Uh, we put some high value content on that spinner, and this guy is one of them. And uh, I can't say enough about it. Andy, what do you think as you're enjoying it in my collection? I love it. Like they're the most detailed and large, right? These are 12 inch yeah. figures, yeah, basically. Yeah, one, one six scale. One six scale. So. Uh, I love them. They're they're incredible and they're so well done. I know they're expensive. They're a different price point, um, but they're worth it. You know, it's it's a it's a different thing to collect, and there are definitely there's a market for it, right? So um, while I have one hot toy in my collection, and I'm going to get a second one this year, it's not something that I need to have every single one of. But man, I sure appreciate. A, the ones that I have, and B, the ones that other people have because they are pretty sweet. They are. And and I think it's a balance between, especially guys like us that collect, where you have, um, you've got, you know, your love for the vintage and then, you know, ultimately what you have to uh, decide is like, okay, what do I like from the modern? And for me, it was Black Series. And I, I, I just kind of latched on to Black Series. I thought that the six inch scale was was very cool. It gave gave you more detail, gave you a little, well, not more articulation because of three and three quarters now have a lot more, but it just gave me kind of that visual that I always imagined that my vintage figures had. I always kind of pictured them looking more detailed. Let's ignore how they looked. And, and to get that was pretty fantastic. And then when you go to these hot toys, which give you just fantastic detail, I don't even know. I don't know. It's hard to pass them up. There, there's something that's going to be on the shelf in my collection uh, for a long time, and uh, absolutely represent. I think the brand Star Wars and and the figures pretty awesomely. They don't they don't fail, and they they're pumping them out right now. They are pumping them out. I've got a bunch of other pre orders I'm going to forget <laughs> about uh, that that hopefully will be on their way. But anyway, Andy, you've just diligently uh while you were <laughs> while it was was filling time <laughs> <laughs> while you were talking there um I, we've got one more thing to show and it is even another level from the one six scale yeah. hot toy sideshow side collection sideshow mythos a, line mythos, mythos statue statue yes and this thing is nuts now the deal is you just took that grab me that grab me the the ipad you threw on the ground okay because we we did a little video that we actually put up what do we put that on our patreon yeah i mean she's gorgeous in like a thousand ways it's fine if it's disconnected yep yeah so she's she's fantastic and she's scary looking well, beyond scary, she's just the stylistic, you know, Dathomir's 
Skull. I, I mean, if you played Jedi Fallen Order, you fought one of the guys that that is uh, represented by that skull, I believe. One of the, the big old monsters. I think. I don't know. I could be full of crap there. Who knows? Usually am. Um, but she's fantastic. This, okay. So we're sitting here. This is uh, probably 20 inches tall. Yeah, yeah. I'd say that's... I mean, that's... We're, we're approaching two feet tall. The lightsabers are freaking incredible. Like, just the flowy... The, like, there's a mythos statue of, of this Lando, or not Lando, Obi-Wan. There's a mythos statue of... Uh, is there a Boba Fett one? I think there is. Um, but these are... These are... I, I mean... They don't... They don't come with all of the accessories um, or the articulation that the figures do, but they do pose and just look awesome. Keep going. And I'm trying to You're doing great. Trying to spin here, the self spin. There she is. Look at that. Did you look? <laughs> I got it. <laughs> like, she's so good looking, like, I don't know. And the bass is nuts. Look at that visage. Like, scary. All right, hold on. While I pan the bass to the switcheroo. This is movie magic, folks. This is movie magic right here. Oh, oh she you didn't comes see that with a cowled head. Very cool. Let's get a shot of the sabers held backwards. Oh, they're so good. Now, do you think that the Asajj Sabre design and the connection to Dooku were intentional accidental or intentional? I think they're definitely intentional. The curved. Oh, what do you say? The bottom of the base. There's something on the bottom of the base. Jackson. Is there anything in there? Creepy. Other than that big skull. Oh, there's some, there's a skull right there. Now I'm really looking, Jackson. What do you got? What do you, what do you got me looking for? Unless you're talking about oh, the underneath. artwork. The artwork on the bottom. Oh. Yeah, it's amazing. Unless you're talking about, which I can't lift that up with one hand. Probably weighs what? Twenty pounds? Yeah, it's it's not a light thing, by any stretch. Hey, look, there's our camera. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. No, let me. <laughs> oh. oh, hey. Close. Yeah. <laughs> Here's how it started and how it's going. <laughs> oh, Jackson wants us to lift it. She's rad. All right, lift All it up. Right. You got this. Right. Andy's coming around. He's coming around. You ask, uh, lift by the base, not by her. She's yeah, stuck into it. Cool. Oh. Honestly, never seen this. And Andy, you're not seeing it right now because you have I'm to do not, that. I'll have to watch it on the rewind. Dude. 976 of 4,500. Thanks, Jackson. I'm a loser. I literally took her out and just set her up. I never even looked at the bottom. Jackson. Points for you, buddy. I'll send her to you. <laughs> it's beautiful very cool so do you like cowled head or yeah head? go ahead and show them the transition the transformation and it's very cool it's like a magnetic connection there you go go ahead
think I like her uncount. I, I think she, uh, hold on, let me take that back. I like them both. It doesn't matter. Whatever showed up, I'd be happy with. The cowled version is so cool, but the uncowled is See, also the a The version has the chin, like, tattoo. Yeah. Whereas the other one doesn't. Hmm. Hmm. It looks like she ate blueberries. Yeah, and got all over it. <laughs> yep, that's what happens. No hood we have there, so... Anyway, good stuff. Good stuff. That's so cool. You know what? Oh, we yeah, should turn, turn it back around. towards turn the it around. Oh, yeah. Just kind of. She's adorable. She is kind of a babe in a scary, don't want to meet my mom kind of way. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> <laughs> all the good ones are that way. <laughs> I, mean, uh, ones. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, my wife. I mean, uh, well, we got some, we got some differing opinions here. They prefer the cow because of her eyes. No yeah. Good. That's, that's where I'm at too. Uh, ladies and gents, I am like it. either one, as soon as they, as soon as, as soon as it, is on her i'm fine with either one she's gorgeous so yeah yeah well what else you got buddy i what think that's got? it man yeah i think yeah, that's, that's it we're right at yeah. 110 and minute 10 and i think i think it's a good place to end for the day we showed a lot of stuff today yeah there was there was a lot of things to go through and, and show and talk about and um if i think uh what would be great is if we shared this one because I think there's some uh, there's something for everybody in this episode. Yeah, we've got you know low end to high end and everything in between. Well, and also we you, got vintage, yeah. custom, uh, modern coming up on Disney Plus, Tarkovsky stuff. Yep, which Tar you can get as a, re a reasonable price, not in production, which is good. Yeah, so, so there's there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. what, what do we got? What did I miss? Oh, yeah, welcome yeah. welcome to the show. So for those that have stuck around this long, okay, and then you've been watching and listening, okay, we're gonna we're gonna throw a little reward at you. You guys that have watched us for any amount of time know that Red Five Designs has been sponsoring us with toy review items um, and just sponsoring us for toy reviews in general. Mm -hmm. Uh, they also have posters that they um, have given some to us to give away to you guys. And the poster in general, or the, that I'm particularly speaking of, is the Book of Boba Fett poster. It looks like a, it almost kind of looks like a movie poster itself. But um, yeah, it does. We'd like to give one of those away. Should I go grab it? Just yeah, go grab it. it. All right. I'll just, I'll just uh, push a Saj closer. And back her off. No, but uh, a very cool poster. We're uh, thoroughly excited to have Red Five Designs as a sponsor. There we go. And there it is, the Book of Boba Fett, coming December twenty twenty one. And we'd like to give one of these away to one of you guys. We've given a few out already, but if you haven't gotten one yet, or even if you have, um, if you could like and retweet this on your Twitter timelines um, using the hashtag Book of Boba Fett. We, uh, we'll, we'll grab one of you guys and send you one of these next week. All right. Yeah, and these, are, these aren't in print. These aren't. There's only, what are, what are, there's like 400 of these. Yeah. They only made 400 of them, but they're sweet. I've got mine framed hanging on the wall um, at my house. There'll be one behind us here soon. Soon. And uh, again, Johnny made this. This is not an image that he pulled Greg, off. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, they, these guys are awesome. They made this, so this is very cool. And we'd like to give one away to you guys. So again, um, retweet the show, uh, like, share, up. subscribe. Yeah, pump it up and tell them about all the cool things we showed and off. And leave tonight. a comment after the stream. I mean, tell us what you like. Tell us what you didn't like. Tell us what you want to see. Look, half the stuff we get to show you guys is from your own requests, and we want to make sure we're showing you the the content you want to see. And we'll go work for it too, by the way. We'll go work for uh, a particular toy or item or topic that you want to talk about. And uh, we just love you guys. Community's great. Uh, toyalty, as Andy would say, 
um, which is hashtag toyalty, which is big here, but um, very cool. Andy, any final words before we uh, do what we need to do? No, just uh, go play with your toys. Go play. <laughs>